Welcome to the class. As control engineers, you will encounter scenarios where the controlled plant is unknown or time wearing, or there are changing disturbances that cannot be compensated by a single PID or lead lag controller alone. In these cases, system identification and adaptive control can be extremely powerful and can achieve things such as this and this. Consider the input-output relationship of a plant where the input is U and the output is Y. For a linear system, the output Y at time k plus one is a linear combination of the past inputs and outputs. Or simply, after introducing vector forms of the parameter and data, Y at time k plus one can be simply written as the product between a theta vector and the regressor vector phi k. The goal of system identification is to estimate the unknown parameter theta. Suppose we have an estimate of the parameter vector theta hat. At time k, we can do estimation of the output y at time k plus one. At time k, the principle of these squares estimate the parameter vector by minimizing a quadratic cost function jk which is summation of the previous collected actual output y minus the predicted version of the output using the parameter estimate theta hat k. This is a quadratic function and can be minimized by taking the partial derivative of jk with respect to theta hat k. The solution is in the form of a matrix inversion multiplied with the summation of regressor vectors and collected outputs. At time k plus one, we have one more data that we can collect. We have a new input value and we have one more measurement y k plus one. Using this updated information, we can do better estimation of the unknown parameter theta by minimizing now a new quadratic function with information up to time k plus one. The structure of this quadratic function is exactly the same as the previous one, jk. So the solution will have the same structure. Theta hat k plus one is going to be a matrix inversion, which we call f k plus one times the summation of regressor vectors and past output values. Now we have these two set of solutions, theta hat k and theta hat k plus one. And with the updated information that we can collect from time k to k plus one, we can improve the estimate. So in principle, theta hat k plus one will be more accurate than theta hat k. The benefit of recursive least squares provides the powerful result that there's no need, if we know theta hat k already, then there's no need to do directly the computation of theta hat k plus one, which involves a big inverse matrix computation. Recursive least squares or RLS will simply update the previous parameter estimate theta hat, add some correction terms to it, and then generate the new parameter estimate at time k plus one. To derive this recursive formula without doing a lot of matrix inversions, the main observation is that if we take a look at the two analytic solutions, theta hat k and theta hat k plus one, we can see a lot of terms in theta hat k actually will reappear in theta hat k plus one. With such observations and a few linear algebra, we can obtain this simple mapping between the parameter estimate theta hat k and the parameter estimate 
at the next time instance k plus one. And the arrow term can be written as a adaptation gain matrix fk plus one times the regressor vector and then times the error term epsilon naught. The beauty of recursive least squares is that the adaptation gain can also be written in a recursive form. Such a recursive formula is obtained using a very powerful tool in linear algebra called matrix inversion lemma, where the inverse of a large matrix can be decomposed into the inverse of a smaller matrix with some additional terms. The recursive adaptation gain provides an alternative form of a parameter adaptation using only the past data leading to the full set of parameter adaptation algorithm, or PAA. In the PAA implementation, both the parameter estimate as well as the adaptation gain needs to be initialized at some value. The initial guess of the parameter vector theta hat zero can be made by extracting as much as possible the physics of the process. If no information is known, the initial guess of the parameter vector can be started at the origin for recursive least squares. The adaptation gain, on the other hand, needs to be initialized at a very large number. This is because the adaptation gain is always decreasing based on the recursive formulas. Another useful consideration in practice is the concept of forgetting factor. The previous discussions has assumed that the actual parameter vector theta is constant and the adaptation gain keeps decreasing. Therefore, the adaptation becomes weaker and weaker as time evolves. For time varying parameters, we need the mechanism to forget the old data and emphasize more the more recent data. Consider a new cost, JK, where the error in the past are weighted by a scaling factor called lambda. This type of scaling will reduce the impact of the previous error in an exponential fashion. The error of prediction at time k is fully weighted and the error at time k minus one is weighted by lambda. And the error at time k minus two is weighted by lambda squared. If lambda is chosen to be less than one, then data in the past have less and less significance if they're very far away from the current time. The solution to this modified cost has the same structure as before, with the difference that the forgetting factor lambda will enter both the adaptation gain update f as well as the update of the parameter estimate theta. Regarding the adaptation gain, the recursion can be expressed either directly as the inverse of f matrix or directly by using matrix inversion lemma as fk plus one to be updated as a function of fk. Here, the forgetting factor is a constant. In fact, the weighing can be made even more flexible by introducing a time varying forgetting factor lambda one k, which corresponds to a cost function where the past arrows, past adaptation arrows are weighted by multiplication of lambda one at different time instances. Combining the different settings of adaptation gain and forgetting factors, we can finally achieve the results of time varying disturbance rejection that look like this. That's system identification and recursive least squares in a nutshell. You can find the full set of lecture notes in the link below. See you next time.